even though he's never been like classically trained, he's always had like a good ear for when it comes to music. So. All right, my first question for you is, what was the, when was the first time you realized that music was your passion? That's actually a good question. Um, uh, I wouldn't say it was one time. You know, I think it was like a, an actual, um, it was a couple of times when the realization hit me. And it was uh, through different stages in my life. The first time was uh, just being in the church environment. And, you know, in the 90s, uh, gospel music was pretty crazy. It was like at the height of its height of its uh, genre. You, know, you had the Kirk Franklins. You had the you know, Donnie McClurkins and the, the, uh, the Wine and CV and CC Wine. Like, you had everybody... In the church community, those artists seemed like superstars, and all the churches was playing their songs. So, just uh, sitting by the drum set, watching all the drummers get on and off, sitting by the organ, watching all the you know organ, organ, uh, organists play, organists uh, get on and off, switch on and off. You know, one musician gets tired, they're like, "All right, come on," and they usually be the you know, the next, I guess. Um, next kid that they were grooming to be the main musician, they tell them, okay, now's your time to shine. And they hop on. And just being in that environment, that was the first time. Uh, another time would be definitely be in uh, eighth grade. Eighth grade at this time, right? it's my first time making a decision to sing in public in front of people. And um, I did this John Legend song called Coming Home. It's a song about um, uh, a military vet, and it's like his letter to his family. You know, that's pretty much the whole song. And um, I remember it, it was so, it was silent for the first three seconds after I got finished performing. And then it was like this roaring applause. And I was like, uh, I think I like this. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, and, uh, you know, just throughout my career, just working with other uh, phenomenally talented uh, musicians and artists, definitely, it kind of just helped keep my confidence up and help me solidify or make up in my mind that, you know, this this definitely is a passion of mine. This definitely is connected to my overall purpose in some way, shape, or form. I hope that answered the question, huh? You know, I, I, I like to think out loud, so, like, the way I process things, I have to say a bunch of things until I eventually get to the point that I made. Not another good thing, good I definitely did answer that question. And hopefully that, <laughs> I hope you, you're feeling like that, that way as well, because I definitely feel that way. But uh, yeah. next thing is, uh, who was your major influence when it came to your style of music, because I know everyone out here has like a different kind of style when it comes to like what they're creating. So, who was that major influence for you? Um, that's another great question. Uh, I have a couple. Um, Stevie Wonder, definitely top. Uh, Michael Jackson, definitely top. Um, another artist. Well, another person who's not really an artist. My mom, of course. Um. And I'd also say this writer slash artist, his name's uh, James Fontenot, he's been out for, but he's been like under the radar. He's more known as a songwriter than he is an artist. So um, yeah, those are like my main influences when it comes to you know, uh, my style and my sound. For sure. Nice, nice. Uh, I know recently you've worked with a few good name artists out there and people have doubted that but I don't see why that would be something people would doubt but um who is it that you feel like when you've worked with you feel like all right I finally now made it to the top 
Like, who would be that one, but one artist where it's like, all right, this is, this is it right here. First time I heard Journey's music, I was like, one of those times. I grew up, I've always listened to gospel music because I was always running around with my mom. And I felt like when I first heard that Journey music for the first time as a kid, that kind of opened up my eyes a little bit. As I, there's more music out there than just what I'm listening to at the moment. So it's like, it just brought me back a little bit just to think about how it spanned my mind a bit on different kinds of music genres. Yeah, Journey. I, I grew up around a lot of different genres of music. And the other, I, of course, I grew up around gospel because, I mean, like my whole family, like my great grandfather was a pastor. Or he was a bishop. My great grandmother, she was a pastor. My grandma was a pastor. My grandfather was a pastor. My dad was a pastor. So it's like a, a whole lineage of just gospel, 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 gospel. But um, well, of course, I heard a lot of gospel music. But every now and then, um, I would kind of just sneak away and just listen to whatever was on the radio. I didn't care what station it was. I'm like, I don't care if this is rock. I don't care if this is pop. I don't care if it's R and B. I don't care. I mean, I just need to listen to something outside of uh, gospel. And it ended up just making my musical palette very uh, diverse. So it ended up helping me actually. Hmm. All right. Is there anyone who you feel like you could not work with musically? Like, is there anyone who you feel like could be, like, a bit too far out there? Not necessarily musically. Um, it was an artist that I worked with recently. His name is uh, YK Osiris. He's, like, a younger dude. Mm -hmm. And his personality kind of rub me the wrong way sometimes but his musical talent was pretty pretty good pretty good pretty um brilliant uh musical talent and i could tell he got a lot of his influence from michael jackson from when he like he was singing and i'm like oh that's really cool but i mean um i don't think there's anybody in the world that i wouldn't be able to gel with on a musical level but you know of course everybody has different personalities so i guess you just 
Okay. So I saw you recently worked with Tori Kelly. And I have to say, I followed her from her YouTube days up until before she became famous. So I wanted to ask what that, what that whole experience was like, because I'm kind of jealous, to be honest, that you're like, uh, in, <laughs> you were in the same room with, as her. I was rooting for her. I can't believe she lost in like the mass Singer last season. I was like, out of all, she lost. She lost. Like, how is it that everyone else that was on there, like, and she was the one to lose on the mass Singer of all places? Like, you know what? I think that, um, I think the mass Singer is more about entertainment than it actually is, like, talent, like, singing. Uh, because I think T Pain won one of the seasons. Yeah, he won the very first one. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows T Pain's not like a singer, singer, you know. But I mean, he he, he does got he does he he was he off. Has, he can hold a note. He can hold off. I just got off. What uh, like a tiny dust thing he did or the off auto tune. Yeah, yeah, he can definitely hold a note, but it's like, you know, you think about like how we're used to for so many years hearing them with mm. the auto tune. So like after you hear them without the auto tune, it's like. I probably got to warm up to this, but, um, I mean, yeah, he, he, he definitely can hold a note, um, but, uh, yeah, overall, I feel like that show is, it's mostly, maybe after the first season, they started to, like, really double down on who can be the most, I guess, theatrical, or who can have the best props, or who can, you know, put on the best show, overall, you know? Yeah, I was disappointed to find out that she was... I did not know she was on there. She was on, um, I, I, uh, followed her from, uh, American Idol, her American Idol days. And, um, that was a, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I think she was like a kid when she was, a, like, uh, on American Idol. And she was so sad that she didn't, you know, mm. get to move on. And, you know, I just saw her little, you know, things about her here and there. And I saw her again on Vine. When Vine was a thing, remember Vine? <laughs> oh, like, Vine. Yeah. I was like, this girl looks familiar. And I was like, oh, that's her. That's the girl from, you know. And I've just been following her ever since. But, um, man, the experience working with her. Um, I recently worked with John Legend, too, right? So, right. That's all that John true. Legend, his, the sessions that I had with him were the most, um, I felt the most at home because he was very genuine from the time he left me at his home. No, I didn't think anybody was home because, you know, I'm like, all right, anybody here? And I just opened up the front door and he's like, yeah, yeah, come on up. I'm like, come on up. I'm like, I could have like, like, been somebody like trying to, but then it hit me. I'm like, he probably already had cameras everywhere. So he probably knew who was coming. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, that was the most genuine, but Tori Kelly, she had such a, a light, like, light personality, like a light spirit. It's like, I feel like you can get along with anybody because she's just so, she's not like bubbly or like, you know, um, what's the word, or like, uh, just sparky or like, she's not like over the top with her personality, but she's. She can definitely uh, bring joy to the whatever whatever room she uh, steps into, and I mean, of course, everybody knows that she's a phenomenal singer. That's that's not anything new, but um, and she was so easy to work with. You know, she takes criticism and direction very well, and um, she knew what she was doing. She knew what she wanted to do. She knew how to add her flavor, even if I instructed her to be like, all right, singing like kind of like this. She added a little flavor. I'm like, all right, we can do that. That works too. You know, but um, it was an absolute um, great experience. She's very um. I got to share like a website. We did website with her. Like we were all talking about uh, McFlurries mm-hmm. and how McDonald's their ice cream machines are always down. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I just randomly saw uh, TikTok where this guy just did random uh, websites. And, I mean, maybe this could be for your fans, too, for your listeners. Uh, you can go to mcbroken.com. And what mcbroken.com shows you, all the uh, ice cream 
uh, machines at McDonald's that are actually working. Oh. So they, so they give you the location <laughs> of the exact McDonald's where the ice cream machine is working. You can just go there and, you know, get yourself a McFlurry, you know. That's definitely interesting. That was the thing. Yeah. Big, big Broken. Big it's bro- such a funny name. Yeah. But it works. It definitely works. Bigbroken.com. <sighs> Alright, after seeing what who you've worked with so far, are we expecting a good amount of features on the next album? Well, um right now, uh working on song for my brother's album, uh I think so. Uh-huh. Um we're working on songs with him. Um we recently worked with uh John Legend and of course Tori Kelly, which we just um right now we're wrapping up actually a feature of Pink Sweats with Tori Kelly on a on a ballad. It's gonna be like a very um you know, for the couples, you know, something romantic mm-hmm. for the couples, something, you know, that'll get the couples to be very interested. In. It's a very dope song. Um what's the other one? I just wrapped up um, another artist. Her name's Ivy J. She's a uh, she's a great artist. She's a cool, um, I get hit little girl. <laughs> she's, uh, she, I mean, she know all the trends, you know, and everything. She she fits very well into the market. Um, as far as me, I'm actually working on an EP. It's called The Language of Love. And um, the EP is going to feature all the different faces and different phases of love. So it's not going to be, you know, the subject matter isn't going to be, nece- isn't necessarily going to be exclusively romantic. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's going to be like, you know, love between mother and daughter, love between father and son, love between friends, love between uh, you and strangers, you know, like different faces, different phases of love. Because I think that's, it's not really marketed a lot. It's not really put out into mainstream music. Most of the time, when you hear about love in mainstream music, you think romantic all, almost automatically. So I kind of want to just, you know, put that out there. All right, so what should we expect this EP to be out? That's a good question. Um, we still have uh, about three more songs to do. Um, if I was to put a guess, because uh, I'm really not trying to rush it, mm-hmm. uh, I want it to be genuine, I want it to be authentic, and I want everything about it to be, you know, full of purpose, because, you know, why else would you do it, you know? But, um, we're in April right now, um, I'll probably say late June, early July. Yeah, it sounds like a good timeline. So be on the lookout for that. I'm pretty sure it'll be everywhere you can listen to music. Apple Apple Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all that. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. And, uh, yeah, also, I'm, um, I'm in a band uh, for the artist Pink Sweats we just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to be starting touring... Um, we're going to have our first festival show on August 6th. And I believe the festival is called the High Festival. Where's that going to be at? It's going to be in, um, I, I'm, you know, I'm not even sure about the location, but I know, you know, artists like Roddy Rich, um, uh, a lot of artists, um, are going to be on that, uh, particular festival. It's like a mini Coachella. I'll say. Okay, I definitely have to be on the lookout for that. And depending on where it's at, definitely might try to see if I can, like, where, wherever it's at, I might try to see you again. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be able to um, shoot details after I uh, check it out again. Because I literally just got sent, a, um, one of the band members sent me, like, a flyer. Mm-hmm. And I just, I was just looking for the dates so that I could put it in my schedule, but I didn't look at the actual uh, location yet. Right after we get over here, mm-hmm. I'm definitely gonna I can shoot you over the uh, information. Heard that definitely, because especially considering how 
people have been missing that kind of thing because of, like yeah. <laughs> festivals and concerts and man. Yeah, man. Have you had to feel like any struggles as a black artist when it comes to music? Like, do you feel like you had to like push yourself to pass certain boundaries in order to be where you're at right now? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Um, most of the, I will say that most of the battles have been mental. Um, it hasn't really been like anyone physically standing in my way a lot of times it's me getting out of my own way me getting out of my my own head me uh learning how to not sabotage my own success that's a huge thing um i've been doing i've been producer i've been professionally producing and songwriting since 2014 2015 Mm -hmm. I got my first write up in Double XL in 2014 for this girl, uh, Raven Felix. She's uh, she's um in LA. She's LA based, and that was like my first major artist that I worked with. She was signed to uh, Wiz Khalifa and uh, Billy Taylor again. And, mm. um, that was actually yeah, that was that was a cool experience. But uh, since then, um, you know. All along the way, it's been like just mental battle, just you know, crush, learning how to just crush obstacles in your way, but on a mental level. Because again, there's nobody that's physically, you know, standing in front of you, telling you what you can and can't do. The only person that can determine what you can or can't do is you. So, I mean, and even today, I still have struggles. You know, even today, you know, I still um, battle with, you know. Because what a lot of artists won't tell you is, or, you know, any people in the entertainment industry, period, they won't tell you um, that it's no single, it's no single point in time where you can say that you made it. It's like, it's almost as if you're always just climbing the ladder. And part of realizing that you've made it is just acknowledging how grateful you are for the artists that you work with or for the places that you've been or I'm sorry or for the um the uh the the success that you had like since 2014 I've worked with Ray Felix Busta Rhymes Mary J um oh man <laughs> Day 26 um like for all the old heads, <laughs> day twenty six. Um, man, uh, Jackie Clark, which is like a gospel singer, part of the uh, legendary Clark Sisters. Um, who else? Uh, oh yeah, Justin Bieber, John Legend, uh, Tori Kelly, Sabrina Carpenter, which is like she's like a child star. Uh, Olivia Rodrigo. Uh, just a lot of artists, and you know, it's very easy to get lost in the sauce, but gratitude helps center me, helps keep me centered, helps keep me focused on uh, doing bigger and better, you know. But yeah, I definitely still have struggles, but you never, you don't get less struggles as time goes on, you just learn how to deal with them better. Yeah. Nice, nice. All right, I got a couple of friends of mine who are expiring artists who can't seem to get their foot in the door. But um, what would you say to them who who are trying to, to at least get it to where you're at now? Well, um, first, know your craft. You know, hone in on your craft. Like, be it almost like borderline obsessive. You know. You have to treat it like because the way I see it is you know, I believe like in the universe and all that I mean of course I believe in God too but you know I believe that like certain laws and certain practices are put into place by God like you know the whole concept of the universe and the law of attraction and all that um, the way I see it is you have to 
you can put out in the, into the universe that you want to do something, but you still have to prove that you actually want it. You have to prove that. And it's weird, but it's real. You know, like you really have to prove that you're able to, or that you're willing to make certain sacrifices. You know, for the first uh, four years from like 2014 to 2018, of my career, I used to stay up super late. I used to stay up until like 2 a.m., uh, wake up around 4 a.m. Because at a certain point, my body wouldn't allow me to sleep past 4 a.m. So I could go to sleep. I could go to sleep at 3.58. And my body's like, all right, we right back up at 4 a.m. And then I'm going for a whole day. Like, are you willing to only get two minutes of sleep? You know what I mean? I know that's a bit extreme, but... It is, you know, I'm not saying everybody has to get two minutes of sleep, but, you know, it's, you do have to, you know, prove to the universe that, hey, I really want this. This is not something, it's not just a pipe dream. This is something that, you know, I just want because I saw somebody else have it. It's something that I truly want in my heart. And um, so first, yeah, hone in on your craft. Be borderline obsessive with it until you're great. And what you do, or at least good. You gotta be at least good. You gotta be. You gotta be able to compete with other sounds, other people that have already been in the industry for ten plus years. So you gotta first get to that level. Um, also, um, put yourself out there. You know, put yourself out there. Meaning, if you have social media, put out some content. You know, even if it's just a single video a month, get like into the flow of consistency my first three years i was working like a dog as far as like uh producing and songwriting mm. every single day i'm at my laptop every single day i'm at um i'm in somebody's studio every single day i was like going 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 going, going, going. and um okay that's the second thing the third thing be comfortable with nobody acknowledging what you're doing because it's going to be a while where, you know, nobody's going to ask about what you're doing. Nobody's going to care about what you're doing. And that's going to be the time that you really need to buckle down because you'll be closer than you was, than you've ever been to, you know, your goal of, you know, being an artist or whatever. Um, what's another thing? Yeah, I said, only on your craft. Yeah, okay, let's do the one now. Hone in on your craft. Mm. Borderline is obsessive. Um, put yourself out there. Create some content. Uh, third thing, be comfortable with not being noticed. Be comfortable with not with people not acknowledging what you do. Um, and fourth, just be patient. Just be patient. And a lot of people, when I tell them be patient, they'd be like, for how long? I'm like, for as long as it takes. Really, like, for as long, it could, some people it takes 10 years. But the beautiful thing about when you succeed, nobody cares about how long it took you. If you become a billionaire at 60 years old, nobody cares that it took you 60 years to become a billionaire. They just care about, like, Where you're, you're a billionaire. <laughs> you know what I mean? If anything, they'll applaud you because you're 60 years old and you were able to become a billionaire. You know? But yeah, those are the four things. For sure, that I would tell anybody that you know, and also this is just a, I guess, a golden. Make sure that it's what you actually want to do. <laughs> like, don't just do it because it seems cool. Don't just do it because you're trying to get rich quick. Like, do it because you genuinely, genuinely want to do it. You know, as long as you love, genuinely love doing it, it will never feel like work. You'll be getting two two minutes of sleep. It'll never feel like work. I mean, that's that's my take on it. Oh man. Uh, my final question: If you were to sell out any arena in the world, what would they? What would you want the arena to be? In the world, I'm saying 
you could be international, you could be domestic, like. You know what? I say Wembley Stadium. Wembley Stadium. Wembley Stadium is actually legendary. Michael Jackson, Queen, like all the, uh, Elton John, like all the top acts that you can think of, especially in the pop music world, have done crazy shows at Wembley Stadium. I would love that. No, Ed Sheeran sold that out when he was on tour. That guy. He's definitely one of those diamond in the rough kind of mm -hmm. stories. Yeah, his story is very, uh, very interesting. I think he started out like just performing uh, like the train station. Like train the station, stuff. clubs. Just him and his guitar. <laughs> it's funny because it's hilarious because I've seen him do like arenas and stadiums with literally just him and his guitar. And I'm like, I don't know anybody else that could do that successfully. Considering how everyone else has always got like a like a band or like backup singers and all that, but. Like very intimate, very, very simple, very um, you know, easy listening kind of thing. Because people miss that; they'll never say it, but I think people actually miss, you know, like acoustic, like the, uh, the Ed Sheeran's and the John Mayers and the Pink Sweats, and you know, artists like that. They miss all that. Here's an idea for you guys: strip back. Little concert series. Yeah. I mean, that's what we've been doing with our pink for the most part. Um, I mean, the band is there, but we don't, like, do anything over the top. Like, um, we keep everything, for the most part, laid back. We might have one or two songs where we're doing, like, fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, and the fancy stuff usually only lasts, like, five seconds or so. It's like very, like I'm telling you, like if you've never been to one of these shows, you should definitely, um, you and you and wifey definitely uh, come to one of the shows, man, because uh, they're very, it's very special, it's very, um, it's a real feeling to uh, see all these people singing along to the song, and it's not like a lot that's going on musically at all. Very basic, and um, it feels good. It feels pure. <laughs> All right, well, I definitely appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and be, on, course, be on an episode of this. This is my second episode so far, but I'm hoping to get a lot more followers at some point, listeners. And if there's anything you want to plug in oh, at the end uh, here. Y'all can follow me on um, Instagram. I got a lot of singing content on there. I recently did uh, a reel with my mother and a few friends, and um, it's pretty cool. You can follow me on Instagram at my name is James Bowden. James Bowden, uh, J, because that's my artist name. I'm going by James Bowden, but um, it's my name is J M E S B O W D N. Check it out. For sure. Instagram, also TikTok. I know you don't got a lot. Of, yeah. I know you don't got a lot of content yet on TikTok, but I know once that gets rolling, it's no stopping on stopping on that platform. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure, man. Um, yeah, it's pretty much all the same, though. All my social media is pretty much the same. But um, yeah, it was definitely, uh, definitely a pleasure and an honor uh, being on the. Being on the podcast, man, I got the second episode. I'm happy about that, for sure. And, um, hey, I mean, let's uh, get another on your hundred and second episode. Let's do that, too. <laughs> for sure. I uh, mean, I can't even think of what that what that subject would be like. Maybe, oh, man. Hundred and second episode. I got you locked in on that, though. Yeah, man. You, you got it. Locked in. Locked in. 
All right, this is Tyrone, and you're listening to The Black Perspective. All right, man, see you, man. See it. My man, talk to you later, man. Will do. Whew.